good morning students welcome to session 3 of microorganisms friend and foe in today's session we will learn about harmful effects of microorganisms and the most important topic of the chapter nitrogen cycle so i'm starting with the harmful effects of microorganisms now we all know the microorganisms are cause disease in humans so some of microorganisms are cause disease in human beings such diseases causing microorganisms are called pathogens there are various ways given below through which they can enter our body the first way is when a person suffering from common cold or flu it sneezes coughs or spits the fine droplets of moisture carrying virus spread in the air this virus may enter a healthy person while breathing the second way is through the direct contact with the infected person the third way is through a food we eat or water we drink through vectors or carriers the word carriers means the infected person like some insects or animals the organisms that transmit transmits pathogens from infected individual to a healthy one are known as carriers now some common human diseases caused by microorganisms the first one is tuberculosis or tb it is caused by bacteria and the mode of transmission is air then measles it is caused by virus and also the mode of transmission is air then chicken pox it is also caused by virus and the mode of transmission is air or through contact of infected person then polio which is also caused by virus and the mode of transmission is air or either water the preventive measures for this disease are keep the patient in complete isolation keep the personal belongings of the patient away from those of the others vaccination to be given at suitable age now cholera it is done by bacteria the mode of transmission is water or the food then typhoid it is also caused by bacteria and the mode of transmission of this disease is water to prevent this disease maintain personal hygiene and good sanitary habits consume properly cooked food and boiled drinking water vaccination to be given at also suitable age hepatitis b or it is done by virus the mode of transmission is water to prevent from this disease to drink boiled drinking water and also vaccination has to be done then malaria which is caused by protozoa and the mode of transmission is mosquito to prevent from this disease use mosquito net and repellents spray insecticides and control breeding of mosquitoes by not allowing water to collect in the surrounding now some common plant diseases caused by microorganism the first one is citrus canker it is caused by bacteria and the most mode of transmission is air rust of wheat it is caused by fungi and the mode of transmission is air or seeds the 
नेक्स्ट प्लांट डिजीज इज येलो वेन और मोजेक ऑफ बिंडी इट इज कॉज बाय वायरस एंड द मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन इज इंसेक्ट सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट हार्मफुल इफेक्ट इज फूड पॉइजनिंग इट अकर ड्यू टू कंजप्शन ऑफ फूड स्प्लॉइड बाय सम माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स दैट ग्रो ऑन अवर फूड मे प्रोड्यूस टॉक्सिक सब्सटेंसेस दीज सब्सटेंसेस मेक द फूड पॉइजनस एंड कॉजिंग सीरियस इलनेस एंड इवन डेथ दिस फूड स्टार्ट फॉल स्मेल बैड टेस्ट एंड कलर मे ऑल्सो चेंज दिस स्पॉइलिंग ऑफ फूड इज अ केमिकल चेंज सच अ फूड इफ इटर्न कैन लीड टू बी फॉइट फूड पॉइजनिंग सिम्टम्स इंक्लूडिंग वॉमिटिंग डायरिया हेड एक एंड फीवर इट इज कॉज बाय बैक्टेरिया एंड फंजाइल so we have to preserve our food so the process by which spoilage of food is prevented by using suitable chemical or physical methods is called food preservation the first method is drying or dehydration of food it means removal of water dehydration means removal of water from food materials in the absence of moisture the food microorganisms stop growing vegetables and dry fruits are preserved by this method then if we add special preservatives preservatives are chemical substances like sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfate are common preservative used to check the growth of microbes they are added into pickles and also used in jams to check their spoilage the third method is prevention by common salt common salt has been used to preserve meat and fish of for ages salting is also used to preserve amla raw mangoes and tamarind etc preservation by sugar jams jellies and squashes are preserved by sugar sugar reduces the moisture content which inhibits the growth of bacteria which spoil the food now the next is preservation by oil and vinegar use of oil and vinegar prevents spoilage of pickles because bacteria cannot live in such an environment the next step is pasteurization it is used for the prevention of milk it involves the process of heating of milk to about 70 degree centigrade for 15 to 30 seconds you can see on the milk pouch on you have that at home the pasteurized milk yes it is the pasteurization process and then cooling quickly to a very low temperature this milk is then stored in cold pasteurized milk can be consumed without boiling as it is free from harmful microbes the milk that comes in packets does not spoil as it is pasteurized pasteurization was discovered by louis pasteur the next method is proper storage and packing dry fruits and vegetables are sold in sealed and airtight packets to prevent the attack of microbes now we will study the important topic of the chapter it is nitrogen fixation and the nitrogen cycle plants can utilize the enormous amount of nitrogen gas which is present in air about 78 percentage for their growth for this the nitrogen has to be converted into 
nitrogenous compound the process of conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compound is called nitrogen fixation nitrogen fixation can be done by the lightning as we see in the sky the second certain nitrogen fixing bacteria in soil like astrobacter and the rhizobium bacteria which is involved in the nitrogen in leguminous plants rhizobium leaves in the root nodules of the leguminous plants such as beans and peas with which it has a symbiotic relationship now we will study nitrogen cycle nitrogen is one of the essential constituents of all living organism it is a part of proteins chlorophyll nucleic acid and vitamins the nitrogen in atmosphere is circulated again and again through a living and non living things by the nitrogen cycle as you see in the figure the atmospheric nitrogen comes the atmospheric nitrogen it is converted into the nitrogen fixing by a bacteria or blue green algae or it is fixed by lightning also and then it is turn into nitrogenous compound and the compounds which are present in the soil these nitrogenous compounds taken by the plants and then the animals which eat the plants and the waste of that animals or from the dead bodies of that animals again the nitrogenous waste is converted into the compounds of nitrogen now it is denitrificated by the bacteria which denitrificate the nitrogen from the nitrogenous compounds from the atmospheric nitrogen so the main steps in the cycles are as follow the first one is the atmospheric nitrogen is fixed to be converted into usable compounds the second step is these compounds are utilized by the plants through their root system nitrogen is used for synthesis of plant proteins and other compounds animals taking these plants as a food get these proteins and other nitrogenous compounds when these plants and animal dies certain bacteria and fungi convert this complex nitrogenous compounds present in their bodies into simple nitrogen compounds certain other bacteria convert some of these compounds into nitrogen gas the simple nitrogenous compounds are again absorbed by the plants for their growth the nitrogen gas goes back into atmosphere as a result of this cycle the percentage of nitrogen in atmosphere remains nearly constant so i hope you enjoyed today's session in the next session we will study the next chapter so till then goodbye take care